I'm always like 30 seconds behind the list. Of the so let's go. If not more. Yeah, go ahead. Well, great uh, road win uh, in league to, to really kind of start off a league play. So anytime you go on the road, obviously it's 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 great, but it's also in the league. First game of the league um, wasn't their first game, but our first game in the league was uh, was obviously a great weekend. But the great thing about it was I think we had a little adversity. Some people would look at the score and think that uh, you know, it, was, uh, it was in the bag from the get-go. But uh, you know, to go on the road and to have to handle some adversity, and, and adversity was in the first half, but uh, defensively, you know, that opening drive, I mean, they go about six, seven plays right down the field, score a touchdown. And we had kind of talked about that, about the ability for us to get on the road to play complimentary football. Not that I thought that something like that could happen. I knew the quarterback was a dynamic guy. He was going to make some plays. We were going to have to adjust and adapt a little bit to, you know, whatever the situation, whatever it is that they were going to do. Um, it kind of happened, and the offense, you know, answered the bell, went down, drove the ball right down the field, uh, which really not just because they got a touchdown, but even the way they did it <clears throat> gave us an opportunity defensively to kind of settle back in, talk about some things, make some adjustments. You aren't running back out there, and whether it's a, you know. A, replay an out or even a you know a quick drive so that they score on a big play and they're right back in there without being able to make some adjustments. So we were able to handle some adversity defensively. Offensively we had to handle some adversity. You know we lost uh, Garrett Campbell who went down and then obviously uh, we turned the ball over the next snap on, on a little bit of a bad snap and a mishandled ball. Um, and it's only 14 to 7 at the time so you have a turnover which is an adversity on the offense which then gives them the ball back and they go down, have an opportunity to put the ball in the end zone. Uh, to tie the ball game, we make a really good play defensively, force them to kick a field goal, to attempt a field goal, they miss it, and then offensively to end that half, we come back out in, in a, in a two-minute situation and drive down the field for a big play touchdown in about 45 seconds. Uh, I think that allowed us, obviously sprang us into the, to make the game the way it was and come out the second half, but as a coach, you kind of look back and say, well, you know, we, we had to battle through some things, we had to battle through some adversity, uh, both offensively and defensively, which I think makes us uh, better in the long run. So we got a chance to grow. We got a lot of guys that got an opportunity to get in there late in that game, which again um, allows us not only, you know, we keep talking about the third youngest team in college football right now, it might even be a little bit more because we got some younger guys that got an opportunity to go in there and <clears throat> to play a good quarter's worth of football. So th those are things that as a coach you say, hey, this is, these things are going to give us opportunities to, to grow and get better at what it is that we do. Could you give us uh, an update on Garrett Campbell, what he, what he has, and what, what's the outlook? Well, he broke his ankle, he had a fractured ankle, um, so he'll be out for a while. I don't know exactly how long, but uh, you know, it's, it's not a mystery. It's, uh, it'll, it'll be a little while. Yeah. As a past, your point total from the past two years, now, does that go back to being able to handle some success? We haven't had this since I've been here. We haven't had to worry about that. So um, it's another thing for us. You know, each, each and every year, each and every week brings something a little bit different. Um, it's a good problem to have, but it's also an issue. So, you know, those are the things that, as you build the maturity of what you do inside that locker room, allows these guys to handle all different things, whether it's praise, whether it's some success, whether it's big plays against you. I think that that's the thing to me um, with handling a little adversity. We did a better job of even defensively last week uh, in that you know, in that second half. I think they got down there. You no, know, in the first half, that that last drive that they had an opportunity to tie the ball game up. We had a couple penalty penalties that led to first downs, which we didn't panic and we didn't lose our minds and we still continue to play. So, yeah, it always worries you that, that you know you got to be able to handle some of these you know positive things and, and what's being said out and around. Uh, but when you look at the whole, you're hoping you're seeing the growth maturity wise on the field, which obviously translates all the field as well. How did you feel like your non-conference schedule compared to guys for conference? Well, to go on the road was, you know, to, to go to UCLA, I think, is, is a great thing. I know that some people would say, oh, that's your first game, and that's a, that's a tough opener, and regardless of, you know, what they've done the rest of the year, but I think it, it allows you to kind of do what it is you're going to do. You know you're going to have some big games on the road. Uh, inside your league, they're going to be huge games. Um, so what it does as a young team, too, it helps you to kind of grow together. Because when you go on the, on the road, you got 74, 75 guys, and that's it. And, uh, so I think that it's, it's, it gave us the opportunity to, to challenge ourselves um, then to have Alabama and m which gives us a little bit of a different opportunity, not just to play young guys, but to, to build some momentum, to, 
had the chance to you know, throw the ball around a little bit and things like that. So, like I said, if you look at back at it now, it's been a really good progress or, or for us throughout the entire year. Um, I don't know that you would always say that if things didn't go the way you want them to, but um, so far right now, looking at it, you can kind of tell that you've had some challenges. You've had some ones. We've had some other opportunities, and it's given us an opportunity to, to build some momentum and, and some uh, some positive stuff inside our, our program. You guys are not scoring opponents 50 to 3 in the fourth quarter. And on Saturday, how important was it to keep playing even though the score was well in your favor? Well, that's where you start to get a little greedy. And greed is not a bad thing when you're just talking about on the football field. I'm not saying that <laughs> we want greed in everything we do. It's not we, But when you talk about being that little bit of, talk about athletic arrogance and some of those things, you got to have confidence. you got to build confidence. Um, as you start to do well, you know, you start to get a little bit greedy. And that, that's not a bad thing. So, you know, as long as you're preparing, as long as you're still working at it, uh, but when you get into those situations, I think it, it applies some pressure to some of those young guys going in the game. And those guys are you know, on the sidelines. Yeah, they're, they're having a good time, but even you know, as coaches, you get a little greedy with, hey, we expect you that you can step in there and still do the things that, um, that the first guys did. You know? and they're not pulling back. They're not going to put their young guys in. And that's still their best receiver going down the middle of the field. They're trying to get the touchdown into it, maybe a young quarterback. But, I think that that's all part of the growing process. It's not just them playing, it's the pressure that hopefully, even though the score is what it is, it's the pressure that they feel from even their own teammates to, to not let them down based on, hey, we don't want to give up any more than seven points. Could you um, talk about your uh, defense, number two in the country in scoring defense? What's different this year? I, I, I don't, aside, from the, make points. aside from the culture, <laughs> Aside from the culture change, which you talk about a lot, but technique-wise, is there something? What we're doing, I mean, when we've had issues, it's been in tackling. We've done a much better job, obviously, covering down the field, allowing ourselves to challenge guys, which in turn makes people have to make some big plays. You know, they have to be accurate at what they're doing. You, you kind of look at it, and even the big catches this past weekend, I, I wasn't disappointed. I mean, the tight end caught two balls on, really, actually, on our defensive end, on our jack. I was really happy. I mean, they were great. Give them credit. That was a great throw, great catch. They're contested throws and catches, and that's what we want. We want to be able to, to have an opportunity to, to challenge every throw, contest every throw. Uh, makes teams have to do the little things in order to beat you or to make some of those big plays. So I think the combination of being able to tackle better, tracking the ball uh, better in that back end where you're challenging uh, most every throw, I think it allows you, it gives you some opportunities for your guys to make plays. Do you have any injury updates on Dokes? Uh, Dokes is, is going to be out for a while. So he, he had a little little surgery on something that's growing. Uh, don't know exactly how long he'll be out, but uh, he's going to be out for a little while longer. Could be, I don't know, could be two, could be four. Uh, I'm not going to so not that. definitely season ending, though? No, no. I, I, would, I could have an ACL surgeon. I would tell him it's season ending because I think that mentally puts them in a, in a spot where they stop maybe working and at least preparing and things like that. So I would never say that, no matter what the injury is. But I hope it's not going to be a season injury. Was it? I know you tried to come back kind of towards the end of camp. Was it just it, it didn't heal the way they thought it would? Or not a doctor? I don't know. I don't know. It's imperfect science. I know that. How did the team respond? I was him being out for a while, but especially Garrett being a, a senior leader. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, you, you can look at the second half, and that was the challenge. Uh, I'm not saying that. That was the only reason why we you know, came out and played the way we did the second half. But, you know, adversity can either make you stronger or it can, it can hurt you and make you crumble. That's the challenge to us as, as an offense, as an offensive line unit, and as a team. You know, that's a big loss. I mean, he's, he's a lot for us. And, uh, you know, so which means he's going to put a little more pressure on some other guys and see how they react and respond. We talked last year about being able to run the ball. You guys have 14 rushing touchdowns this year. Uh, can you just give on success running the ball. I think that we made an emphasis. I think that we've done a really good job up front and, and given an opportunity. Mike Warren is the guy that you know, has done a great job running the football. Uh, our challenges are going to continue to grow. This is a really good football team we're playing and a defensive football team that's going to challenge you in everything you do. So uh, each and every week poses something a little bit different. But I know as a program, as a philosophy, we, we want to be able to run the football. We want to be able to have this thing start up front. You know, Garrett Campbell was a big part of that, his opportunity, his chance, or his 
willingness for, to move to center for us wasn't his most natural position. You know, he really probably felt most comfortable at guard and things like that. And that has been a big, big step for us to move him um, into that center spot. But you know, Jakari was the other guy. He was the sixth guy as we rolled all basically through camp saying, what's going to be the best combination? And he's going to get another opportunity for us. You talked last week about Pendell and wanted to try and bottle him up. And you guys seem to do a pretty good job of that. Do you feel like that is a reflection of them taking coaching and film and meeting? It is. I, I got to give a ton of credit to the defensive front. Not just because you know they play well, but because they believed in what we're telling them. I mean, everybody wants to rush, everybody wants to get on an edge. I mean, all you got to do is pop on the untimed down last year against them. I mean, we're we're getting a great rush off the edge with Kamani, and, and he turns his hips and he is pressuring the quarterback, and he just takes off and runs. You're not going to catch him. So you had to be really much more disciplined in what we were doing, and truly believe that we had to make him throw out of a, you know out of a hole and, and kind of keep him in that pocket. And, you know, I, I don't know that he. You know, maybe had the versatility, uh, maybe it was a little bit digged up from the week before. But nonetheless, uh, you see him run on like the fifth play of the game, he didn't look too bad. But those guys up front just did a, a really good job playing disciplined. And, and even when you got the score a little bit out of control, you know, when you, you get up by three or four touchdowns, uh, a lot of times guys go right back, revert right back to saying, hey, how am I going to get myself a sack or two here? And to see Kamani and Cortez and Michael Pitts and, and Marquise Copeland stick with the plan and not deviate even based on what the situation was. You see that maturity grow. Um, it's got to continue, but you, know, you like what you see. Offensively coming into the year, there was a need for more splash plays. The last couple of weeks, Rashad Medeiros has given you that. Can you just talk about his development and, and being a threat now? Huge. I mean, I, Rashad, Josiah, I mean, there's a lot of plays out there that are being made, and, and I think it's it's a confidence level too. I mean, maybe last year we wouldn't have taken those shots. The first game of the year we wouldn't have taken those shots. The second game of the year, obviously based on the conditions, we didn't take some of those shots. But as you build those confidence, not just in the receiver, but the quarterback and the protection, I think it allows you to open up a little bit more. So it's a, it's a combination of all. I believe those guys can make plays. You know, they're, they're helping make the quarterback look really good. And I think that that's probably is one of those big things that if you just kind of step back and take a look at last year. Not the last year's end, but even through fall camp and sometimes it's, you know, how do we make the quarterback look really good? You know how you do it? You're like Rashad McDerris, you make it, you know, it's a great throw, but it's a really, really good catch. You know, his catch against them, you yeah, it's a good throw, but he also finished it off with a 78 yard touchdown and Jay Sean Jackson. So there's some guys out there uh, that are really giving him an opportunity to look good as well. With DeGuara, he's not your typical tight end in terms of size. How have you been able to utilize? What's my typical tight end? Well, he's not 6'5", 200, and, you know, so just a, he's not a. Typical tight end or something? Yes, no, that's, that's what they look like now. <laughs> but I mean, he's not textbook. He's a little bit undersized for, for what the position's become. How have you been able to utilize him as well it's as you not, have? I mean, I think that his ability to grow, I think that's where, you know, he is unique in some ways. I mean, I don't tell him he's undersized. I don't tell him he's, you know, not prototypical. There's a lot of guys like that, you know, but who's to say what is? You know, what we want is guys to have versatility. And I think that's what you're starting to be able to see that, that he provides for us is some versatility. Whether it's wide receivers that have versatility means they'll block. Well, they're not just the guy that's going to run go routes, you know. Tight ends that can block, can line up in line, can line up off the ball, can run behind the line of scrimmage and block guys, can insert and block guys, also can flex out and make some plays down the field. The thing that Josiah brings you is, is the flexibility to not say, hey, this guy's, uh, hey, when this guy comes in the game, they're throwing the football. Hey, when this guy's in the game, they're, they're running the football. So he provides us flexibility, his intelligence uh, goes a long way too. Tulane, uh, obviously, coming off of a big win, you've touched on it a little bit. The, the average fan sees, oh, Tulane, don't, you know, that's what happened. Did they play play? Talk about yeah. how they've, I you guess, know. come along. It's a, it's a completely different team than what I saw last year. And regardless of what the record is, I mean, they just beat a Memphis team that was, what, one point away from beating UCF in, in, uh, in the championship game last year. So, you know, they came out and played really well. They really did. Uh, I think they're playing at a high level. And, I, and I'm not saying that they're that much different. They still do the same things offensively. They're doing a lot of the similar things defensively. But the way they play, the aggressive nature that they play with, uh, the attitude they play with it is different than what I saw in the film last year. You know, and pop on their special teams. Blocked a punt against UAB, not because they schemed something up, just because a guy out effort another guy. You know, 
important. So you're seeing those, those things are what I, you know, what I look for. You know, what I look for on film is, okay, what kind of a challenge is this going to pose to us? You know, oh, you came in here really tough, hungry. Um, and I, I say it's a, it's a lot like that with more athletes and, and, and some better situations. Defensively, I think better because some of the things that they can do, uh, but play that physical and that tough. Can you talk about their running game? Two backs rush for 100 yards each. Last week, uh, what's the plan to limit their production? Fill up the gaps. You know, tackle well. I mean, it, it still comes down to meeting the feet blocks. I mean, uh, they do. They have a really good scheme. They, they they'll run the option. They'll the quarterback is a viable uh, guy on every 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 situation. Not that he's run the ball maybe statistically as much as he did maybe last year. Because he's more of a quarterback, he's able to distribute the ball. I think the unique thing that they got is some of the balance that with the RPOs. It's still a run, uh, but they're doing a really good job of pulling things, reading them, and making some plays down the field, throwing the football. So that helps their run game um, far more than what I think they maybe had last year. Coming into the season, it was pretty clear you and other offensive coaches were high on Dez. Is there any sense of validation with how well he's played early on? No, I mean, I think everybody felt like this kid was going to be a really good football player. Um, you know, the ability to do some things around him has really helped him. I'm not saying that he wouldn't be a good football player without the running game because, you know, he, he's still a confident kid. He's got a lot of ability and there's some things he can do, you know, even throwing the ball and running the ball. Uh, but the emergence of having a really solid offensive line, a tailback that can take a lot of pressure off of you, uh, some receivers that have made some plays down the field, I think is in enhanced his ability to improve, gain his confidence, um, and allow himself to shine a little bit more. So, you know, the ability to handle some of those things and continue to grow, that's what you love about the kid is he's a pro. Even though he's 18 years old, 19 years old, he's a pro. He's, he, he loves what he's doing. He continues to work at it every single day. I'm not sure there's a day goes by that he's not looking and working and studying the game of football. And those are the guys that in the long run end up becoming the most successful. I wanted to follow up on something you said last week, Coach, when you said at the end of the year, we'll get what we earned. You guys are 5 0 at this point on the doorstep of the game, right? Do you think this team's earned a spot in the top 25? Not something I spend a whole lot of time with. Uh, we went three or four more games, and I'll, I'll worry about that. But, uh, you know, we're, we're where we are right now, and that's what we deserve. You know, we deserve to be 5 0. That's where we are. Uh, what anybody else thinks, you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities here down this next six or so games, seven game stretch that uh, we'll have an opportunity to, you know, to prove some things to, to the people outside of here. But to me, the most important thing is to continue to build, you know, what's in here as opposed to worrying about what's out there. And that's, you know, you could say that's cliche, that's a coach talk, but that's the philosophy of us as a program. You know, when we feel like we're at that point in time and you know, we've made some other things happen, then yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll want what we deserve but I truly believe we'll get it. We had a challenge for Coach Talk here as well. Uh, when you said earlier that, and I think you said last week, I live on a rock and I didn't know these things. <coughs> and you talked about some of the guys starting to feel some stuff on the outside people talking about the program. Are you starting to notice anything more as this gets further and further on? You keep yeah, I mean, you talk. start to get some calls and some text messages about guys that want tickets. You know, like, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this, this place is going to be a little more filled up. And, because people do recognize, you know, people do see, and, and you know, we're, we're all, <laughs> we all love a winner, you know, whether that's friends of mine who, you know, haven't been around for a while, or, or, you know, people even in the community, that's fine with me, I don't care, as long as I get on, as long as I get on the bandwagon, and, uh, you know, so yeah, you, you can start to sense and feel, even, on, even if you live under a rock that, that a lot of us live under, uh, you know, but you just got to be able to handle it, continue to move forward, and don't change what it is that you do. Is the fact that this game is the homecoming game change the preparation leading up to it? No, no, no. I mean, yeah, there's some other things that might drive you a little crazy because you, you've got a routine on what you want to do. Uh, but for our players, there's nothing different. It's a, it's a new start, which is not something that we've um, done a great job of this year. We had one of them. You know, we've had a lot of these late night starts, 3.30 starts, had one early start. Uh, so we got to do a much better job. So there's a lot of things that we know we can do a better job of learning from what we've done. How important with Garrett out for a while to have Jakari go in and, and face a little adversity, but then rebound and, and put together a solid That's game? Great. I mean, you, you, those, those things are invaluable. To, you know, to have that happen, and the game had already been, you know, maybe a little bit more out of reach. Uh, the, 
pressure wouldn't have been on. You know, it's like I said, some of the defensive guys that go in there, you know, the pressure hopefully you kept on them because the older guys and you know, hey, we only give up seven points and we don't want to give up any more points and you know, so you love the pressure to make guys have to go out there and perform because at some point in time they're going to go in. It's going to be a different situation and there's going to be a natural pressure that's going to be on them. And, uh, you know, want it to be their first time. Good. Thanks.